Hi everyone and welcome to Foodful Thinking's new series called Day Drinking where we sit down with people that are passionate about their culinary craft. I'm Kehlani. And I'm John. And it's Thursday Thursday and what time is it? Drinking time. It's yeah, beer <laughs> drinking time, it's beer, beer o'clock. o'clock. Yeah, beer o'clock and I am so excited that our first episode starts in Philadelphia, I think one of my favorite Philadelphia breweries, at Yards, with the owner, Tom Kehoe. So, Tom, tell us, take us through the story. What was the inspiration? The story of Yards? Well, yeah. started making beer in my dorm room in college. You know, that's how everything starts, I guess, you know. You find something that you enjoy doing, and, you know, we're make, making beer, and next thing you know, we're uh, visiting a brewery, and... Uh, taking the brewery tour and realizing, wow, we could actually do this. This is just what we're doing as in our home brew. So sort of kept showing up to the brewery and eventually, you know, started uh, volunteering to work there, started actually working there. And then next thing you know, it's like we were just had the bug to try to open up a brewery. So we eventually did. <laughs> that is awesome. And it's it's so cool to think that, like, there's a generation now of drinkers who don't remember Philadelphia without a Yards, if you think about it. Yeah, I which mean, is awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. I know, like, in Philadelphia, Yards was one of the first breweries that I was ever introduced to. Uh, but one of the first, like, I'm a real big history nerd. And one of the first lines that really caught my eye was the Ales of the Revolution. Yeah. The Ales of the Revolution, and I love the concept of it. We have it right, right here, front and center. Uh, I love the concept of it was that you, you like, it's like drinking with the founding fathers. They pretty much, like, and correct me if I'm wrong, you, you took the recipes of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, um, Benjamin Franklin, my boy Benjamin Franklin, how could I forget him? But you also took, is it Alexander Hamilton as well? There's Well, it, there's an Alexander Hamilton beer, but he actually didn't have a... Uh, a beer recipe, but we did a beer for him as a great Philadelphian, and he was the example of what Philly drinks. Exactly. So. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So Which leads to the, to the actual beer that Alexander Hamilton is, you know which it's taken from so so take us through take us through the line like how did you acquire these recipes should we have a beer though when we yeah do I, th- I think you know what it's called so. day drinking so <laughs> that's i think right which one should we start with well let's start off with uh you know a real daytime beer which would be brawler brawler okay yeah. yes yes let's have a brawler <laughs> all right and tell us a little bit about brawler while while we get some so brawler action. is uh it is an english mile and it, although it, it's an English mild, it you know, has a little bit of a menacing name. And it is very uh, malt forward. So it is uh, you know, malty and it's not hoppy. It's very easy to drink. And it's definitely one of my favorites because I really love English ales. And it really... Which is <coughs> interesting that you call it yards, like an English right. yard. So the name actually came... We knew... We were working at uh, a company down in Maryland called the British Brewing Company, and we knew we were going to, you know, make that type of beer, like an English ale of some sort. So our first beer, which was extra special ale, we didn't want to call it an extra special bitter, which is a type of, uh, you know, English English beer. So we called it an extra special ale. We actually did a couple things to make it a little bit more to our liking. So we increased some of the chocolate malt. We you know, made it a little bit more hoppy, and we made it a little bit stronger. So it was about a 6% nice hoppy English Ooh. ale, and it really, you know, was our flagship beer to start off with. Nice. But Yards actually came from, we knew we wanted something that had like a real British kind of uh, name or angle to it, and it came, actually came from Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard. So we were okay. going to be something Yards, and it took us really a few years to get into business, and everybody's asking us, how's Yards doing? And it just turned into Yards Brewing Company. Excellent. So that's a true story. So cheers to that. Cheers. And here's Brawler. And let's cheers. get our day drink on. Day drinking. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, I love how fizzy it is. And it is. It's like it's a refreshing beer. Yep. So it's nice for those like hot fall days. Like it's been really hot weather <laughs> recently. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, too, I do love, like, if you hear any sounds in the background, that is the sound of just the brewery yep. working, working in the background, creating, like, some of Philadelphia's, 
greatest beers that we'll bottling be drinking. Bottling some beer today. Yes, bottling and, yeah, and so all that fun great. stuff. <laughs> yes. Um, so, okay. I have opinions of Benjamin Franklin's spruce beer. Okay. There, it's you know, it's it, <laughs> no. This is great because the spruce beer was uh, was the third one we came out with. Um, the first two recipes are, are kind of pretty known, or there's there's talk about the recipe. But the the Ben Franklin recipe, I guess, it was uh, came from uh, writings that he did. That's all kept by the Philosophical Society here in Philadelphia. Ah. So they actually have Ben Franklin's writings. They actually came out with a. Franklin book on food, things like oh, that, and where cool. it actually wrote the recipe down, and we took a chance to uh, try to make that recipe and make it uh, as authentic as we could. So, uh, what, but like, it's cool that you, it's actually Poor Richards. Yes. Poor Richards, so you kept it in line with the almanac, I, and <laughs> yeah. I love that, I, and I love the concept of it, I well, love everything. A lot of nature in a spruce beer. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I love everything that Benjamin Franklin does, like, I am a huge Benjamin Franklin fan. Yeah. Not a fan of spruce, but it's it's not that it's bad. It's just like it's it was different when I first tried it. It was like a very different sensation, very different like mouthfeel. Honestly, I was like, wow, it tastes like Christmas, but as if I were drinking a Christmas ornament. Like I could taste <laughs> the glitter encrusted right. pine needle or like spruce needle, spruce needle. Yeah. But actually, like in the bottle, I wasn't a fan. But then I had it on tap here, okay. and it was a completely different experience. I actually thought it was a little bit more mild, that I, I liked it a little bit more. Yeah, I get a lot of rosemary character out of it. Oh, okay, and yeah. And I love it as something that, because beer is acidic, it's almost a great way to marinate a couple things. And marinating with the spruce beer, like a, a delicate piece of chicken, you know, like a boneless, boneless chicken breast, you just marinate it with the spruce and everything, and it yeah. gives it like a rosemary. It's really... It really works out pretty well, so. You might have just sold me. Like, <laughs> I forgive, I forgive this beer. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, uh, so when I was, I, when I first started out as a food writer, I reviewed the Ales of the Revolution many, many oh. moons ago. Like, five, five years ago, which is many moons to me. Okay. <laughs> so, five years ago. So, I get this email from this person who was, like, really vehement, and he was like, you're unpatriotic because <laughs> there was a, like, during the Revolutionary War, there was an embargo on spruce, or no, on hops, on hops. So all the Americans, or the, all the colony soldiers, like, had to drink was beer made from spruce or beer made from other things, and that's where, like, kind of the spruce ale well, comes from. That's a lot of its recipe, and a lot of that is, is true with that because, you know, if you didn't have hops, you needed something to balance out some of the sweetness. Also, there wasn't a lot of grain either that was really available, so there was a lot of molasses that was put into the beer. Good and that's a good fer fermentable and things. So there's molasses and, and spruce in the uh, Poor Richard's Tavern Spruce. So. Oh, yeah. molasses. Okay, I yeah. see. So, John, talk about the porter a little bit. So I was reading that there's a difference between an American porter and, I guess, a British porter. Or is there a difference between a Philadelphia porter? Is that sort of American porter? Well, it, it, it's funny. George Washington was a big fan of porter, and he actually talked about it or wrote about it and things like that, about, you know, saying that, you know, the porter made here in, well, I guess it was the colonies or the United States, is as good, if not better, than what you're getting in, in England. Mm -hmm. So he would order from a local brewery, uh, porter for the troops and over there you know I guess they would take it from Philly out to Valley Forge and everybody would get like their casks of beer and Sydney officers would get the cask of beer and it was it was, generally was porter mm -hmm. so he wrote he wrote a lot about that you know, the difference I, I think is just the fact that uh, you know the ingredients and things we had here it just you know gave it a different kind of profile mm -hmm. you know just how, how we made it but Today you'll think like English porters versus American porters. American porters are always, you know, pretty hopped. Mm -hmm. You know, they they have a lot more hops. You know, the American craft brewers love to hop hop the heck out of the beers, which is, you know, which is great because it's, you know, it's a it's a it's a flavor everybody likes. But I think sometimes those subtleties and those uh, almost licorice and molasses and all, all the sweeter uh, kind of porters tend to be more of a British style porter okay. until you get to the higher levels and now we're talking about some almost Baltic porters and imperial stout kind of things that kind of 
rise up out of the borders. So yeah, it's a and it's I, a great uh, I think it's a great style. I, I actually like. I'm not the biggest porter person because I feel as though porter is like a really like heavy type of beer, and I'm not into the heavy beers. And but I what I like about George Washington's porter is that it's like silkier, it's smoother, and it's, it's almost lighter. Like I don't know how you could have like such a dark beer be so light. Um, well, realistically, the you know the the heaviness doesn't always come from the color of the malt. So adding a dark malt to a uh, beer, you know, you're just add, actually adding a lot more color. Yeah. And it, it really, you know, it's because you can get like beers that become very, really red by adding a dark uh, color to it, but just a little bit of it. And you add a little more, and it, it doesn't add to much of the uh, the alcohol or, or things like or it, it adds a little bit to the body, and that's what people perceive. But sometimes it's that, that, that creamier head that you do get from, you know, the, you know, the head can definitely be more intense in some of the darker beers, almost thicker. And I think that's a perception that you carry all the way into the liquid. Mm -hmm. So the, the dark beers are really, you know, they don't have to be heavy. They really don't. They can, I mean, Brawler is a deep amber beer, and it's only 4.2%, and it's very light. Yeah, so. yeah. And... Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, you know, attributed to writing the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. Or like, writing it. I mean, maybe he had the best penmanship, <laughs> but it was, like, written over the course of many, many months in was, that hot... He was very opinionated, and I, gu I guarantee yeah. his, uh, his, his thoughts were in, in that uh, document. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what's the... And, and a violinist, for sure, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But um, his beer is so potent. Yeah. It's got a high ABV. Well, it, we, we, we've actually, you know, to make it sellable for the, the tourist market here in Philadelphia, we have definitely lowered the alcohol of that beer mm -hmm. a lot lower than, it, than he actually made it. You know, we talk about, I mean, all the recipe comes from, like, his writings about how much grain he put in, things like that, and about how to, you know, you can't just give somebody a recipe for beer and tell him to brew it because you have to learn how to brew first. It was one of the big points he made when he was talking about his beer. But he talks about it and also mentions that he put twice the grain in that would normally be put into a beer. So what that translates into is a beer that's really twice as strong. The more sugar you're, you're creating out of the grain, the, the more alcohol it's going to have. Wow. And apparently it was anywhere between 11 to 13 percent with a beer. We we have and it, it it's awesome and it's uh, not not far from our uh, old Bart recipe that we use as a barley wine, but uh, to actually send that beer out onto tourists in Philadelphia walking down Chestnut Street, it would be a bad idea. <laughs> so, eight percent is still a monster beer. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of alcohol, a lot of character, and you really get the you know the idea of what the beer was. It's also you know he wanted to promote agriculture big thing you know with uh, Monticello and so forth so he would basically would talk about his beer and say everything that we put into this beer we grow right here so there's there's rye in there there's actually oats and there's even corn in the uh in the Thomas Jefferson and corn yes and corn wow yes. wow so and then okay and then the fourth one that's kind of like official but not really official right like, Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> you, you pretty know. much have to go to the City Tavern to grab that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and City City Tavern is a place that, like, they dress up in colonial attire. It's at the location. It's not the original building, sadly. The, That's like, right, original yeah. building, like, burnt down many, many years ago. But uh, the, it's in the old location where the actual, like, founding fathers would, after they were done at Independence Hall, here in Philadelphia, like, literally, like, kind of down the street a little ways. And, uh... Yeah, like, they would go to City Tavern afterward, more rebel rousing would occur yeah, over they'd, drinks. They'd have a, a couple of ales, a couple of beers, and yeah. talk about, you know, hey, are we doing the right thing with this uh, crazy constitution thing we're doing, you know, and you know, what, what else should we add? And, it was you know, like, good conversation over a couple of beers is awesome. Yeah, during a time <laughs> in which, like, what is it? Is it treason or remarkable progress? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, some people really thought that that was... You know, yeah. that they would get their heads chopped off. 
Yeah, and you know, it's it's a it's a leap of faith, you know, to actually start a country. <laughs> it's a leap of faith to start a brewery. <laughs> it is. I mean, we we were just like we said, we had to go all in and do this little brewery. We yeah. we have the the original brewery set up here at in in we're in the area where we do all the processing. We call it Yards One, and it's a little three barrel system, and we do all of our test brews and all of our uh, uh, you know sort of experiments and if we have a brewer that wants to try a, to do his own beer or just to see how his recipe is he can do it on that little system so it's our pilot brewery and it's our kind of like our fun system so we'll try different things out and eventually it might come a beer become a beer so the uh rival ipa you know we started out brewing it on that little system and eventually it became one of our beers and it's one of the beers that's premiering right now with uh you know, in the fall season. So oh. October 1st, it comes out. So we, okay, Rival. Yes. Rival. Did we get the chance to try that? Yeah. Oh we, my we, gosh. we need another beer we right now. We need another beer. Me and you are empty. So. I know, yeah. Refresh time. Time to refresh. So do you want to try the Rival? I do. I do. I'm okay. very excited about this. So, so this is going to be a dry, assertive IPA. Okay. It's not as strong as our regular IPA. It's about 6.2%, and it's uh, got amazing pine notes to it, and... It's, it's definitely a fun beer. That's so. exciting. And, you know, Rival today IPA. is the first day of fall. Ah, there you go. Would this be your fall recommendation? Absolutely. It, it's, it's a perfect fall beer. Even the color is... Uh, Ooh, that's a healthy pour. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we got to realize who's, uh, you know, drinking the most and who's not drinking the most here. So. <laughs> oh, are you calling John a slow drinker? He, 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 he was, he was, he was oh, slow on the last one, so... <laughs> I'm sure he'll catch up. There's plenty of time. So, well, cheers. cheers. Happy yeah. fall, everyone. A tumble right. equinox. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, really nice, dry, sort of. That I would love to sit outside, <laughs> like in one of the nice restaurants before it gets too cold, and hopefully it. Begins. I I could, I could see a leaf falling into my beer. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is good. Mm. It's it's got the like pungent punch of like an IPA. Yeah. I don't know what to call that. Right. <laughs> what is that? It's it's the hops. It's the hop character. It's you know it does. Some hops definitely punch you in the mouth. They really do. I mean they are assertive and they have astringencies to it, and it really you know cuts right cuts cuts through everything. And you're thinking about pairing that with food and things like that. Mm -hmm. It is great for anything that's fatty, anything that's almost hot. You know like spicy. You know that the the hops really pull. You know rip right through it. Yeah. So. And the carbonation is great because it, you know, lifts the fats from your tongue. So. This is not really science-y up in here. Excuse me, what? I didn't know beer Hey, it's day drinking. That. We can be philosophers if we want, yeah? Yeah. This is the beer Junto right here. That's it. Ooh. Gosh. So, speaking of fall and activities in the fall, we are doing uh, this monster beer festival coming out. It's called... Uh, Brawler Fest. Nice. And it's going to be November 5th, and it's, uh, you know, it's going to be basically, you know, kind of like things you do do outdoors, you know, some cornhole competition, some, you know, maybe some, we're going to, we're have a boxing ring, we're not sure exactly, we're still working on everything, but it's going to be a fun time outside, it's going to be uh, in the parking lot of, uh, I guess, you know, what we're future, what's going to probably be the future home of Yards. Oh, so the future home of yards, like, okay, discuss. So a little, just a little, just a smidge. <laughs> okay, we're going to probably be moving about seven blocks away to a larger facility mm -hmm. so could, that we can uh, adapt uh, some little bit larger tanks and also a canning line. And, you know, maybe we'll uh, spread our wings a little bit from there. But it's uh, going to be, you know, a little bit bigger tasting room and an event space. So, so like, I think you were mentioning cans. Seems like they've yeah. kind of caught on and become more popular. Is there a specific reason why? Well, it, it, it's great when you have an established brand and you have established styles, because when you when you add the cans to that, you're adding uh, places that are, you know, very can friendly to sell your beer. Like sometimes, you know, we, they don't really want to sell, you know, bottles of beer at the stadiums. They want to rather have cans and things like that. Mm -hmm. They're also they would like to, uh, 
you know, they're just sort of like, I, it was funny, somebody called it the, the, a Colorado lifestyle. So when people are out doing, uh, you know, hiking and going, uh, you know, on trips, you know, you carry in when you carry out, you know, so you, you, you want to you have cans that are light and easy to pack and things like that. So there's a, there's a kind of a purpose. You're around boating, around a pool, you know, anything like that. Going to golf course, they all want you to have cans. So there's a reason to, you know, to have cans out there to supplement your, your, you know, your bottle sales and actually complement what you're doing. That's so. actually that's actually true. I, I just got back from Colorado. Yeah. They have over 90 breweries in the Denver area, which yeah. is overwhelming. Like I would say 90% of them are like, eh, like they shouldn't be playing with some of the ingredients that they're right. playing. <laughs> like they all have to be like differentiate right. each uh, themselves. So they do like really like cockamony things mm -hmm. like I think like the worst one was like a ginger lemongrass and I was like no that's great <laughs> for dinner that's not good for like beer so you know and yeah the, the culture is out there you you hike in you don't want to carry a heavy bottle you want to carry a can and then you crush your can when you're done your <laughs> hike and then you pack it back in your bag and then your bag smells like beer and you know it's like a whole cycle it's a whole but cycle. I'm psyched to see you actually <laughs> crush cans on your head which is awesome <laughs> <laughs> no but it was funny I always said that I went out there I was out in Colorado and mm. did a couple brewery tours and somebody on the tour asked the tour guide why cans and she's like, oh, it's because of the Colorado lifestyle. And I was like, well, that's why we're doing it. That's awesome. <laughs> I love to see some, some of the Colorado lifestyle yeah. coming over. Absolutely. And, you know, I, we just think cans is a great idea. And it's a, it's a great vehicle for the beer. So. I love when, like, people, mostly in college houses, they create, like, Christmas trees, but out of the beer cans. <laughs> Do you imagine that happening with them? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. A couple of those beer can hats you can wear. Nice. I'll see that on eBay, guaranteed. <laughs> so, is it safe to say, like, you're a history nerd, like, judging by well, the ends of the revolution? A beer history nerd, more. Beer than, history yeah. nerd. That's even, that's that's awesome. That's, like, a very niche market, right? Yeah. But, uh, um, so, these particular figures, it was, it was like, relatively easy to, like, find their recipes. Were there any other recipes that you saw that you, you know, were interested in? None that were what we considered, like, the founding fathers. There was old recipes from different uh, breweries and things like that, which is which are great to use, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's cool because they're simple, but at the same time, you know, every kind of brewery has their own house flavor. Like, I, I, I think a lot of our beers have, like, that same sort of baseline characteristic and flavor, and then we do different things to, you know, liven them up and, and so forth. So I think, I think that was the same thing with older recipes and things like that. But one of the things is we, when we, we sort of partnered in the beginning with this with the City Tavern, and... It was kind of like that was the era that we, we shot for with this, and that's how all nice. that stuff Did came Did you get out. some meat? What's his name? Charles Schaub? Or Schaub? What, it's like some German guy. <laughs> Walter right? Stade. Walter Stade? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I got that I've got to wrong. meet him. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, we're very good friends. Oh, that's Walter awesome. And I, yes. <laughs> that, I'm like a little starstruck because I loved his show. Oh. He had like a cooking show about yeah. like... A Taste of History. Yes, A Taste of History. It's all, it's, I think it's still going. It's an awesome show. <laughs> that's an amazing... Yeah. He's like actually cooking over a hearth. And yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, he's, it's awesome. It blows I mean, my mind. You know, he's like a guy that grew up in the Black Forest over in Germany and, mm. you know, loves his beer. And, you know, when he had the opportunity to have the beer that complemented what he was doing at the City Tavern, yes. it was, you know, we, we just figured it out. We were, it was great. So <laughs> it's, it's an election year. I hate to say it. Mm. <laughs> Obama needs four more years. But um, <laughs> if you were to create beers for each candidate, like, what would those recipes look like? Like, inspired by their personality. Like, how, because you're a historian, you're, you know, you're a brewer. You're, right. That's your art. Like, you're an artist. Yeah. It, 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 it's interesting, you know. Uh, Obama, you know, let, let's start with Obama. He's like a comfortable chair. You know, you, you want that beer that's very comfortable that you can sit down with. You know, you have no worries in the world because, you know, he's just really done a great job. And I think that's, that's you absolutely awesome. You could lean back yeah. in. And lean back. It's like you just put it there, you know. You know nobody's knocking over your beer. It's, you know, it's exactly yeah. what you want. And I, th I think, you know, that kind of a beer would, would have to be something that, you know, is like the comfort food beer. Almost like a porter. But at the same time, you know. A beer that you know is not 
gonna take advantage of you. You know, it's gonna be like medium alcohol. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be just you know the just what you want. You know, just a nice relaxing beer. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, 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 <laughs> the, the, the next two candidates, it could be, you know, you can you can have an amazing time making a beer because, you know, so <laughs> you, you don't always have to drink your beer cold either. You know, oh. so so it's like you know you you could you know. You know, warm up. You know, warm up your beer and get a little more carbonation out of it, which will give you a little bit more. Uh, you oh, you saying more hot fizz. air? More well, not no more fizz. <laughs> okay. In a, in a <laughs> sense that you know, it's a little bit more, uh, you know, har- harder to swallow sometimes when it's when it's got a lot of fizz. Oh yeah. But you know, but you know, but you know, you you you. No matter what beer it is, you gotta you gotta be able to trust the beer. So it's it's a, it's going to be a big part of. Uh, of of designing a beer for for the for the candidates. You gotta trust the beer, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. I I actually was like before we came, we discussed this question. I was like, Trump would definitely be like a <laughs> six shots of Everclear before a night of bad decisions. That's that's <laughs> that's Trump. That's the Trump cocktail. You just trump the evening. I just said a skunk beer. That's that's a Trump beer. A skunk beer. Yes. That's another Trump beer. You know, and it could be a beer you've never had. It, it, it's kind of like a beer you've never had. You're taking a risk. Mm-hmm. You know, or do you want, like, your typical pale ale that is, you know, you know what you're getting. You know you're getting a nice, clean drinking uh, beer that, you know, is good. You know, it, it could definitely have some added ingredients to give it, you know, more character. Uh, but, you know, and not everybody's going to like that added ingredient. But it, it's going to be part of the pale ale. Mm-hmm. So... That, that could be our, our pale ale beer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, speaking of risks, like, was any of these beers a risk or were all of them a risk? Um, I, I think the biggest risk beer that we ever did is, uh, well, it, that's in front of us, is definitely the uh, Brawler. Brawler? Yeah. Because I would say that that's, like, one of the most popular. It's one of our most popular beers. Yeah. But the risk is, you know, when you think about craft pee- beer and what people like, they want... You know something that's gonna wow them. Yeah. They don't want two things. They don't want dark beer to start off with, and they don't want a mild beer. And Brawler is a, a dark mild, an English dark mild. Brawler so is. It's, it, but you know, you give it a name that you know people like, and you put it in front of them, and they drink it, and they're just like, wow, this is great. I like this beer. Nice. You know, and it, it really works, especially, and it works as a gateway beer so for some people that are intimidated because. You know, the rival's too hoppy for uh, someone to have as their first uh, microbrew. They're like, oh, that's, I, I can't drink that. They have a brawler, and they're like, yeah, I can drink this. This is great. This is what I, I expect the beer to be, although it's dark in color. So, And that's another reason the Philly Pale does so well. It's really light in color, and a lot of people drink with their eyes and are just like, yeah, this is what beer is supposed to look like. I'll drink that. They're afraid of things that are amber and, and basically black like a porter. So we want our next beer? Or? Oh, yeah. Let, uh, I think we have time for one more. One more? I, yeah, one good. more. All right. Let's All right. get it. Are we Are we going to go to the Yells of the Revolution? Or? I mean, John, you, you pick. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I can look at Franklin. <laughs> oh, about. you're going to make me drink Ben. Okay. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I mean, I'll still, drink, I'll still drink Ben. I still appreciate Ben. <laughs> that's for sure. So, let's start with John since we ended with him last time. <laughs> So, any other news coming from the Yards Brewery? I mean, it's been an exciting year for you guys. It absolutely has been. It's been a great, fun year, and, uh, you know, we're just, uh, you know, psyched to, in a sense, be, be working on a project uh, of expansion and just, you know, having fun releasing a new beer like Rival. And yeah. when every, t- every time something new comes out, it's like, it's, it's a lot of energy for the brewery. It's a lot of energy to be out there talking about the beer and the public and talking about it with, uh, you know, bar owners who are the ones that are really our best, uh, best salespeople and best fans. Nice. You know, those guys, you know, if it wasn't for them, we'd be, you know, just selling, selling beer out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so. So cheers to cheers that. Cheers to Ben. Here we go, Ben. Evan Porter. Or ta- ta- Tavern Spruce. <laughs> Tavern Spruce. Tavern yes. Spruce. Awesome. 
You know, each time, <laughs> each time it it works on me. Each time. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's something that you're you don't expect when you're drinking a beer. Yeah. You know, and it's funny. I've had a lot of spruce beers, and it's it's definitely a, a balancing act to get this spruce character so it's not too intense. Right. When it gets too intense, everybody thinks they're drinking beer in, in a bathroom. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like pine saw, so. But this is not. It's really, you know, it's, it's, Don, it's very easy. What do you think of it? I don't think I've ever had this one. I've had George and Jefferson, but I don't think yeah. I've ever had this. What are, your first, what are your first thoughts? It does taste like Christmas. <laughs> we, we, we had a, you know, the, the reason the uh, cutouts came about was sort of a long story, but I'll make it real short. We combined, did like a black and tan with the Thomas Jefferson Ooh. and the uh, George Washington. And we called it the George Jefferson Ale. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so it was the moving on up ale. And uh, we, we were going to do a, uh, an event for Sherman Helmsley's birthday. Yes. So we were going to get a cutout of him um, so that we could all take pictures and drink the George Jefferson. And they wouldn't let us do it because his picture was copyrighted. Oh. So they, so they, they, and so they wouldn't let us back out of the pro- process. They just said, "You just got to give us another picture. We can't give you your money back. It's already in the yeah. work." So we gave them a picture of me, and then they wanted to do like, a, yeah. So wait, there okay. really was a George Jefferson beer at one point? No, it's just the black and tan. You oh, mix them okay, both okay. Together. You just mix them you all make, together. You we mix can them make together. this at home. This is yes, like, exactly. So at home, if you want the George Jefferson, you combine. It's like the black and tan, it, you know. It really, the, is it the old get, get us and bass together, or whatever you want to call it, and you, you combine the <laughs> Jefferson and the Washington. You know, is, is, it ju- is it just me, or does it kind of have, like, a little bit of a citrusy taste? Like, I feel like every time I try it, it's, it tastes different. Which, the... Mm. the yes, spruce? yes, the spruce, the spruce. Well, I mean, realistically, spruce does have vitamin C in it. No. Yes. So, it's one way that you were able to use those spruce tips put in the beer... And, you know, those northern countries that would go on ships and, you know, didn't have vitamin C, you know, to prevent scurvy, this was a big yeah, part of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Oh, my gosh. I just learned something new. Yeah, I, I think it's just that, you know, I, I guess that sort of acidity from, 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 the, from the needles, from the, the you know, the, 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 the tree itself, I guess, or, you know. It's probably not far from citrus. Good point. Good point. So. Oh, that, well, I am very excited to have <laughs> yeah. watched like yards grow in the time that I've been drinking. Watch <laughs> yards grow. You know, you guys looking at like a bigger facility. Yeah, it's great. Like bringing out new IPA beers. Yeah. It's interesting though. This is a question. Like, is there a logger on the line? We are having fun playing around with uh, making a logger. Okay. We don't. Act, we don't actually do one. Yeah, because like Philadelphia is like the place where the first American logger was yes. created. In fact, it was like right in Northern Liberty, it's like yes, a few blocks away from was, here. Yeah. So I just found it interesting. Like right on St. John Street. Well, I'm also like I'm <laughs> I'm pleased that you didn't kind of cop out, not cop out, but like do a logger that you like started off with all these other like more interesting ales. You brought more craft beer into mm-hmm. Philadelphia because like loggers are rampant yeah. and you also didn't like cop out with like punny names of beers <laughs> right. or like really like inside jokes for Philadelphia right. only which I think like can bottleneck you into only being we did a little bit on Rival on, oh on Rival what's the story well what? we call it an over the top ale over the top what does it mean Wait. It's actually an old Stallone movie called Over the Top, oh where he's an gosh. arm wrestler. Now, see, that is. But a- it kind of works into the how the beer is. It's kind of over the top on how astringent it is and how piney it is and everything. No, so, but you know what's great? <laughs> what's great about that pun? What's great about that pun is that it's not like so in your face like no, that's subtle absolutely. Yeah. You, that, that has to like sink in <laughs> and you have to you have to actually know that movie because I didn't I didn't right. know that movie I didn't know that one no mm. well thank you so much this was awesome yeah, very for, cool this was cool like thank you so much for being the first guest on Fruitful Thinking's Day Drinking 
Awesome. Um, if you're ever in Philadelphia, you got to come down to Yards Brewery. <laughs> What's, like, the actual street address? Because it's, like, it's kind of... 901 North Delaware Avenue. It's right on the corner of Delaware and Poplar. Yes. So. And... Block north of Spring Garden. You guys can tour the facility. Yep. I've taken the tour countless times. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> uh, but it's a great tour. You get to have great beer. And not only that, but, like, your whole rec area. Like, your, <laughs> I call it a rec room because there's, like, the pool yeah. table and there's, like, things to do. And, like, it encourages... It's kind of a man cave. Yeah, it's a man cave. It, it encourages people to, like, it, it, sit. It's inviting for everyone. Yes, it's very inviting. <laughs> it's very inviting for everyone. Well, thank you so much for cool. watching. I hope to continue day drinking. Drink yards. Drink yards. Drink yards. <laughs> <laughs>